Hi, hi everybody. Um, let me just share the presentation. Gwen, can you can you see the presentation? Yes, we can see it and we can hear you. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So I can start. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, everybody. I see lots of people attending the webinar today. So thank you for being here. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, uh, as anticipated, it's, it's something about the open air research graph. And uh, I want to start with uh, saying that one of the main activities we do, in, well, one of the many uh, activities we do in open air is, is, is focused on, on this, on the construction of, my son, my son is not, uh, can you, is there some problem with my headset? Um, as I was saying, one of the other messages, much better. Okay, great. Like people voted. Um, so one of the main activities, it's, uh, it's about uh, the construction of the, of the graph. Uh, so just because I'm not really aware about what was the background of, of the people that are attending today, um, I'm just saying that a graph is, is, is a mathematical way to, is a modeling way to model reality or the aspects of the domain you're talking about. So mainly you have uh, entities and, and edges that connect different entities together. In our case, our domain is scholarly communication. So the entities we deal with uh, in open air are the ones uh, that you can see on the left of the screen. Um, so uh, pretty much, you know, like even Facebook, you have people that are nodes and friendship is, is edges connecting different peoples. Here we have uh, different entities uh, that are connected through semantic relations. The, one of the central, the key entities that we have in open air is the product. So uh, for these entity and only, we do a, a subclassification. So we have literature on one side, publications, we are, which are intended to uh, be consumed and read by humans, researchers and scientists all around the, wor all around the world. Then we have uh, research data, which is uh, anything that is processed, that can be processed by machine. So it's, we, we, we intended that as machine readable. Um, not uh, strictly human readable, even though you can go through uh, CSV and uh, what is your back? Oh, okay, yeah, we had a poll. Great, thanks for doing that. Um, so, um, uh, let, let me close this. Um, so I was saying research data. Uh, then we have software, which is basically anything that's, that can be compiled, interpreted, run in order to do some kind of elaboration. And then we have a catch-all category, which is other research product. And this is intended to, to host all the, all the products, all the research products that are not strictly any of the three categories that I aforementioned. Um, so, for example, uh, protocols, workflows, slides, and uh, anything that might be very domain specific that doesn't go, um, is not broadly accepted as a, as a, as a well-recognized entity across, across um, science domains, across, across disciplines. Uh, and then you can see other familiar names, or, you know, like projects uh, funded by certain funding bodies, uh, certain funding streams, organizations participating to research and communities, which in our case, it's, it's, it's something we introduce it because we work mainly with and for communities of researchers that can be, for example, uh, um, thematically uh, driven. So for example, I don't know, uh, marine research or bio, biology community, uh, or um, we also have research, research infrastructures, which are community themselves. So um, uh, for example, EPOS, the um, European Plateau Observatory, uh, dealing with the seismology and, and earthquakes and, uh, and other aspects of geology, it's again, it's itself a community. Um, so 
Yes. Okay. So in order to build this graph, because I mean, as, as, as researchers, we daily provide some pieces of information to, to that, that build to these graphs. Every, every time we deposit a, a publication on a repository, every time we go and uh, we release uh, our data to be openly accessible, every time we claim that certain has been funded by a certain project and, and, uh, and then we are affiliated to a certain university rather than another one, we are, you know, like uh, seeding pieces of information that, that, that concur to building this graph. And in order to materialize it, what we do is just harvesting. We do that in a couple of ways. On one side, we go through uh, what we call uh, institutional repositories. So like any open access uh, repository that's uh, exposed by universities or other research centers. And on the other side, we have um, thematic repositories and or repository, rep repositories that are, um, that are run by by research infrastructures for example and or other other infrastructures that are run cross community like zenodo which is our catch-all repository uh, developed by cern or uh, other infrastructures as i was saying apus or dadia which which is for uh, cultural heritage and elixir which are just a few examples of, of research infrastructures we we deal with and when we get all this raw material, raw information from, from the harvesting process, uh, we have a bunch of processes that are, um, that are concurring into the, the progressive enrichment of the information space. We have duplication that tries to put, right, tries and succeed to, um, to put together uh, records that are relating to the same, to the same uh, item, same publication, for example, and uh, and it does so to have um, a better representation of what of all the information that's around. So it doesn't it doesn't overwrite anything. It just tries to put together all the different descriptions. For example, if it has if a pub publication has multiple titles or different author lists or different identifiers, the duplication tries to put everything together and have a uh, a better representation. Of, of the record itself. We have end user claims um, and user feedback. So like, you know, uh, register users, users on open air that come to our website and claim themselves uh, pieces of, with pieces of knowledge that uh, this publication can be related to this funding and uh, this author, specific author has, has participated to the, to the writing on, of a certain paper and so on and so forth. We have a number of mining processes that try to infer uh, missing links that potentially might have gone lost in the original source of data, but that still can be inferred by uh, running some NLP, uh, so NLP, um, sorry for the acronym, but it's a natural language processing over the PDF. So, uh, so that you, for example, you can infer link, missing links between articles and projects, articles and institutions, uh, and, and so on. Uh, once the graph uh, is ready, uh, it is it, used as fuel to, to, to serve certain applications which, which are under the shield of open air, namely monitor, connect, explore, and develop. But this doesn't mean that can, can um, uh, fuel other applications which are third party. In, in, in our case, in, I mean, in the ecosystem of open air, uh, monitor it's for uh, monitoring, for example, research impact. So it's, it's used by, by funders in order to understand how the, the initiatives they are the pro and the projects they are financing, uh, they're going throughout time. We just, in a nutshell. I mean, it's much more complex than that, but uh, just to give a brief overview, Connect, it, it's for uh, giving feedback to communities and providing uh, uh, a, a slice of the graph that's been customized by their own view. So as I was saying before, like EPOS uh, works with geology and seismology, so they can have a, a preferential view of the whole opener graph 
with only results that are pertaining to this community. So it gives uh, stats and, uh, and, uh, and customized search that just, you know, like tailored for the needs of the community. Uh, Explorer is, is the um, search engine that you might know already. So you just go there and it's like Google, Google Scholar, but uh, running over uh, open air research graph and develop is, is intended to serve uh, through API calls the needs for of developers that might want to um, to develop and to 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 query in a in a programmatic way the the information space the the graph that's that's produced by open air. Also, what is going to be part of the European Open Science Cloud as a as a scientific product catalog. So it's it's something that we are pushing for, and as, and um, hopefully in the near future, like uh, the entire Open Air Research Graph is going to is going to take part of the EUSC ecosystem core services as a, as the main scientific product catalog. So, like these are the key. Uh, properties of, of the Open Air Research Graph. Uh, the main one is that uh, it's intended to be open, so all the material we get, we release it with CC0 um, royalties, CC0 uh, right, so it's like everyone literally can, can get into uh, whatever they prefer to, to do with the, with the data we expose. Some parts of, of, of the material we have and we redistribute cannot be redistributed with CC0, but uh, they are rather distributed with CC BY. And this is because we get them with this more restrictive uh, license. So we, can, we couldn't possibly redistribute them with CC0 because it would be more, you know, like releasing constraints, relaxing con constraints. But uh, for example, the, 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 all the information we get from uh, Microsoft uh, academic graph is 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 distributed to us uh, via Open Data Commons uh, by license, so it cannot be uh, redistributed with CC0, but still it can be redistributed by us, and uh, you can use it provided that you uh, reference the Microsoft academic initiative back. One of the other, uh, the second property of, of the open air graph is that it's complete or we have been trying so far in the last, in the last decade to have it as complete as possible. So you, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you can find here like plenty of loggers that you know. Um, it's like, but yeah, we get, uh, we, we rely on, on, on trusted and uh, like in a, in a, in a scholarly, uh, in a scholarly word, trusted sources, in order to get the information we need, and 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 in order to construct the whole uh, graph. And you can see here, like there are sources that are devised mainly for software, other sources that are mainly devised for, for um, providing uh, scholarly metadata and bibliographic records, other ones that are completing all the information regarding authors, uh, read three data, and, um, and CORDIS that are, uh, CORDIS mainly for projects and read three data for, for uh, providing like a list, a reliable list of, of data sources and data providers uh, and, and so on and so forth. And also like on the right, uh, thematic and community, community driven community specific uh, repositories and data sources. As I was mentioning before, it's, uh, it's the duplicated, which means that, uh, again, we try to, put, to, to provide a better representation of a, of a single record by harvesting and putting together all the information that comes from different sites. Uh, there are, uh, I put a couple of, of, of bibliographic references that explain in details. Uh, the, the duplication process. So if you are curious to see what we do and how we do that, that's like plenty of information is everything documented. And uh, you, can, you can check uh, one is a thesis and the other one it's a poster. So it's, um, it's, there's an overload of, of information over there to check and, and uh, in order to disclose which are the internals of, uh, of the um, uh, 
uh, internals of the, du the duplication mechanism. We do the duplication for mainly scientific products and uh, organizations. So uh, publications like that are merged together and organizations because organization can have, can um, be manifest through uh, Wait a sec. I don't know why. Can you still see the this? Okay, yeah. Because I I, uh, I think I accidentally stopped uh, the screen sharing. Um, so I was saying like the duplication of organizations because they can appear with different names. So we don't want to have, uh, for example, our monitoring application to that to provide um, different results uh, for. The same university appearing in different with different variations. We want to have all the all the indicators merge into one. So that's why it's is a, it's a key part of of our monitoring infrastructure. For example, um, it's intended to be um, participatory because uh, anyone can take part of 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 this. Of can be you know inserted in in, in the open air loop. So anyone that literally want to provide uh, material to open air can do it's, it's, it's welcome to do so. Uh, and uh, the same way, anyone that wants to consume, uh, open air, open air, uh, research graph, it's, it's, uh, is, is invited to do so. It's transparent because for every information we have, uh, in open air and we provide, we, we provide, uh, provenance information stating where the information comes from and what are the, the, the real reliability indicators and, and trust for the information we obtained from mining. So because of, uh, because the mining can come with a threshold of, of uncertainty, we always uh, burn this kind of information within the, we, we label this information together with the, with the, with the piece of knowledge that has been inferred. So because we, because in principle, you could, you could say uh, prune the whole graph with anything that's below a certain threshold of, of, of trust. So that you, you know, like you restrict your, your observations to only something that you retain uh, of high quality for your, for your application. It's decentralized uh, because um, like our philosophy is that in any case, open air, uh, hopefully not, but cease to exist. Whatever we produced in, in the last 10 years uh, cannot disappear because it's, it would be just a shame. So the main idea is to redistribute and recirculate everything we do uh, with other research and in initiatives that are building knowledge graphs and, uh, and uh, scholarly, um, scholarly graphs. For example, the, 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 the three that you can find at the bottom of the slide. And uh, we also uh, redistribute what, whatever we find uh, to content providers that are providing us content. So the broker service, which is part of the provide, um, the provide, uh, up, let's say application provide, uh, uh, set of, 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 of services that are, uh, part of open air uh, is, is one service that is intended to redistribute back to the content providers any kind of uh, enrichment and, uh, and uh, missing information they might be interested in. So the content provider can subscribe to certain events and whenever, for example, we find that uh, the original record was missing a DOI or uh, had a piece of information that, that has been enriched by, by our, our processing and our, uh, our construction of the graph, we can notify back in a very punctual way, so every record is, 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 is going to be notified back. Uh, we, can, we can do that for, for, for every, every publication, for example, and, and notify all this new information and, and rich information back to the, to the original content provider. Uh, and again, it's also trusted because uh, users are, are, are considered in the, in the loop so we have user claims, as I was saying at the beginning. So anyone registered on the open air portal can, can claim uh, pieces of information, can claim, can state that something 
uh, has to be merged together, like two, two publications are, are when not they duplicated uh, properly, I want them to be together, I can claim that. If I discover that two publications, on the contrary, have been merged and they are not supposed to, I can claim that again, that I, can, I can claim a split. Um, if, I, if I know that a certain publication has been funded by a certain project, I can do that. So all these, uh, it's like ultimate truth and uh, it's, it can be, it can be fed into the, into the creation of the, of the graph by, by end users. Also, uh, from December, we are part of, of the ORCID. Uh, I mean, we're a member of ORCID, which means that not now at the moment you can only log in, but in the future, we are going to, uh, to link OpenAir uh, and, and ORCID in the sense that you can, you can send publications that you find on OpenAir directly to your CV on ORCID. So you can curate and, and reach and claim uh, all the publications you, and, and data sets and projects and, uh, and, uh, and software and other, other kind of products that are present in OpenAir and send them and, uh, and curate your CV on ORCID. Um, so, populating the graph. Um, so we do we do this in a kind of different way from from what we have seen in other in other similar initiatives. So we have high, like every source of, of every kind of repositories that we harvest from is treated as a hybrid source because uh, we noticed at the beginning we were like um, if we harvest from a a um, institutional repository we were thinking that pretty much everything was like publications. And well, turns out that, uh, turns out from experience, that's not really the case. So um, we learned on our own expenses that it's better to have, to consider every repositories we harvest from as a, a hybrid search. So we have in place some mapping mechanisms and uh, that, that try to classify every single record that has been harvested into one of the four categories you, you see here. So publication, data sets, software, and other research products. The mappings are, are public. You can, you can have a view at them if you follow the documentation on the website. And uh, this is something well, really peculiar that, that, that we do. Another thing that, that uh, it's, it's implemented by Opener, it's uh, like this, um, the automatic bridging of research infrastructures and scholarly communication. So um, what you traditionally have for, for research infrastructure is what you see on the left. So um, a research infrastructure running an experiment with a certain method, certain settings uh, over against uh, certain data sets with uh, thematic services and producing possibly new data sets and so on. What we do in Opener is just, uh, is, is together with, um, with a, I mean, with a strong liaison with, uh, with the infrastructures and research infrastructure, we managed to uh, plug the scholarly, uh, um, a better scholarly communication process right into the infrastructure so that whenever they run experiments, they, uh, through Opener Connect, they can uh, push automatically uh, all, all, the, all the parameters and data sets and input methods and data sets produced, anything that's, that's worth, worth man mentioning into Zenodo. And uh, which means that the experiments, the, the experiment they have just uh, run will be uh, reproducible and transparent for all the community. And this is something that was missing because at the beginning, when, on, when only the left part was, was present without the Open Air Connect effort, uh, the scientists of the research infrastructure, or the infrastructure, had to manually uh, sit down and, and push the records um, onto, the, onto the pertaining repository repositories, which means that seldom, because it was an automatic, this, that seldom they would do that. And uh, in this automatic way, instead, we just, we, we realized that, and, and the communities as well, and the uh, infrastructures as well, they realized that it was much, uh, much better and actually improving 
uh, open science and transparency and reproducibility of any uh, research effort they were they did they are carrying out. Also, one one uh, Zenodo is is um, one any kind of record that comes from 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 research infrastructure is fed into Zenodo that it also is collected by the open air harvesting infrastructure and fed back to the research graph which means eventually at the we will be will be processed and take part of the new version of the research graph this is just is an experiment for the epos uh, infrastructure but it's exactly what i was telling you before so how the the research infrastructure uh, automatically materialize any, any, any experiment, every experiment actually, uh, and, and push the records onto the model. So not every source that, is, is, uh, mm, that takes part of the, of the graph, it's, it's uh, harvested. There are certain a couple actually uh, of big sources that are pre-computed, pre-processed. One is call explorer, which deals with publication data set links and uh, this is done offline. I mean, while Open Air has an harvesting service and that, that runs peri periodically and, uh, and updates everything, both Scholar Explorer and DOI Boost, they are done offline because they have to ingest uh, huge quantities of data. So in Scholar Explorer, it's, uh, we it constitute of, of 480 bilateral links and it's, be, it's all, any link every link is, is between publication and a data set. So <clears throat> it's, it's actually one of the biggest collection of this, uh, of this uh, is, no, the biggest one uh, of this kind and is being used by Scopus for, uh, because we have an API. So they literally hammer our, our endpoint in order to resolve DOIs and see, for example, which are the data sets uh, related to and vice versa. The other one is DOI Boost, which is in a nutshell like uh, an enriched version of Crossref. So Crossref, I suppose you know it, uh, can be harvested from from a public endpoint. Uh, what we have done for in DOI Boost is basically um, try to uh, harvest also another handful of, of uh, sources, namely Microsoft Academic Graph, Unpayable, and Orchid and inject information back into cross-surf data so that, uh, so that is enriched. For example, uh, author, author's IDs or um, um, links to open access PDFs, uh, author's affiliations, uh, citations, and so on. We have, at the, at the time being, 85 million publication records which if you know the numbers and the figures in, in Crossref, it's a bit lower. This is because uh, we, are, mm, we are trashing certain records that are, do not match uh, our you know, like minimal uh, quality requirements because they don't, they don't have titles, they don't have authors. In that case, we trash them because otherwise Crossref itself, it, it counts a something like more than 100,000, 100 million, sorry, uh, publication records. Uh, we try to do that. Uh, oh, both, both the data sets are pushed to Zenodo. So you can go there, look for either Skull Explorer or DOI Boost, and you will find dumps. Uh, we try to update them every six months, even though it's a bit of a stretch because the, the process is quite tricky. So um, that's, that's more a name than, an, it's more a promise than, than reality. But yeah, let's say that every six months, we tend to, we, we tend to release new updates. Uh, so like still on the, on the side of all, all the processing we do on, on, uh, on, while constructing the graph, uh, it doesn't end with mining and, uh, and, uh, and the duplication and user claims. We also have information propagation, which means that we use on, on certain subsets of, of, of the graph, we use uh, logic uh, chains in order to propagate certain information from one entity to another. Very briefly, for example, if you have a publication that has been, um, it's related 
to a data set, either because it reused the data set or it produced the data set, and you know that the publication is uh, funded by a project, then you can say that, um, that the, the data set that has been produced by the publication is also funded by the project. It's something very, it looks naive, but it, it actually improved a lot. Uh, the recall when you search for when you search for things and when you navigate through the portal, and is this the same happens for example when you when you harvest uh, a publication from a certain data source which you know is is of uh, interest or it pertains to a certain community, then you can say that that product is associated associated to the community as well because it's been produced by by as if it's been produced by the community itself. And the same thing happens with countries because you, you, you might, uh, if you know that a certain organization that is, is, resides in a, in a certain country and participated, participated to a certain project, uh, funded, funded a certain publication, then you can say that the publication it's, is uh, associated to the country as well. So these are like, examples of, of the logic propagation we do uh, for certain fields, for certain pieces of information around the entities of our graph. Um, so here, I just want to capture uh, the, the difference in the figures. So, so um, in open air at the moment, there are two souls. One is the production one, which is the one it's accessible to everybody. And, uh, and, and there's also the beta one. Uh, in the meanwhile, what, what the main difference of the, of the numbers is because the context uh, access um, policies changed. So we moved from an open access solely uh, content access policy to open science content access policies. So, which means that um, the graph that you can see in production is much smaller because the the, the main premise was let's let's collect open access. Uh, material. While uh, in the beta infrastructure, we are moving to um, open, uh, open science, which means we get anything from everywhere um, because we want to have the best picture as possible uh, of the whole landscape of, in research at the moment. So as you can see here from the numbers, like we are harvesting from more than 10,000 data sources, we have uh, 340 million records and more uh, are coming from when once base uh, is, will be integrated in, uh, in our pipeline. We have uh, roughly 12 million publication full texts and um, 960 million of links uh, between objects. Is, uh, we count a number of, of licenses around. We have uh, one with Microsoft Research, which is providing us the um, research graph. The, uh, the, the agreement is, is uh, finalized, so we, it's, it's, um, is, is, is inside the loop, but is not up to date at the moment. So like we are finalizing in order to have uh, monthly updates of the uh, monthly pushes of a Microsoft, a Microsoft Research Graph. We have ongoing applications, um, license and collaborations with uh, Unpaywall and Orchid. And also we, 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 we participate to an interest group in, uh, in the Research Data Alliance for uh, Open Science Graph for FAIR data. And we collaborate with a number of different projects and we exchange information and expertise and, and data sets back and forth. Uh, so, at the moment, we are in uh, open consultation phase, which will run for um, some other time before the, the graph is, prom is promoted to uh, production, which uh, is due to happen in, in, uh, in spring. Uh, if you go on this, on this uh, link here, Beth Explorer Open Air EU, uh, you will find a button and that, that leads to a Trello board and uh, which is our main tool for, for gathering feedback from, from you guys, really. So if you have anything to suggest us, please uh, go there, comment, uh, provide feedback, uh, throw ideas, and we will consider any, everything you, you, you write in the, next, uh, in the next release in the forthcoming future. 
this is uh, how the board uh, looks like. So there are different sections, uh, different cards, and you can comment, add new cards and, uh, and ideas and so on. And that would be all. Thanks for listening. I've been maybe, I hope I wasn't too long, it's 40 minutes. So yeah, if you have any question, uh, I'll try to do my best to, to reply. Okay, thank you, Andrea. And um, there are two questions in the Q&A. So maybe we can start with that to get the conversation yeah. going. Just a sec. So, uh, would it be possible to make, every, is everyone reading the Q&A? Oh, best read it out loud, Andrea. Um, okay, yeah. Um, uh, Andrea, would, yeah. It, would it be possible to make it more transparent when data is harvested from different providers? Uh, what is used from Microsoft Academic Graph, for example? Um, so, uh, as for as for uh, this question, I would say that um, so Microsoft Academ Academic Graph takes part in the in the Open Air Pipeline uh, when when we build DOI Boost. There is a publication. Uh, there is an article on deposited, deposited on Zenodo that uh, that talks about in details on what are the informations that are uh, merged into Crossref uh, from from Microsoft Orchid and Unpayable. So if you go on on if you read the publication, you will see plenty of details. Then of course, uh, once the UI boost is constructed and fed back and fed into the open air graph, all this information, all this information flow in the, in the open air graph construction. So, uh, it, you know, like the, it, 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 it um, induces ripple changes. Uh, the other question is where can I find the provenance information reliability indicators? Um, in a dump, in a dump, um, for example, again, um, when building DOI Boost, uh, when we say that a certain author has a certain identifier, we have a trust and we have a provenance information, both are labels. Uh, so in the, when, if, you, if you download the DOI Boost dump, you will see plenty of these labels uh, for trust and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and provenance. Like, where, where the piece of information come from. If you download uh, the, the opener research graph dump, you will find this information, for example, also for links that have been inferred. So at some point, if you see a link between, uh, let's say a publication and a project, you will see that has been produced by this algorithm and the trust threshold for, for this uh, information being produced is 0.75. So it's is again it's it's something you see in the dump. Okay, so uh, I am congrats. Thank you. Which is the technology uh, the graph is deployed on? Uh, a graph DB, for example, a triple store. Have you flattened the graph on a text search server for better search experiences? Uh, the graph. So I know to some extent it can be misleading because when I, when I talk about graphs, I tend to think about um, RDF, uh, all these kind of uh, you know, travel stores and, and, uh, and, and this, kind of, um, uh, this kind of things. Um, actually, what, what it's, um, it's, it's a graph uh, as the web is a graph. So, you know, like the, the web is, it's a graph of web pages pointing back and forth. Uh, the open air research graph, it's uh, a graph of XMLs uh, pointing back and forth. So every entity, so every publication, every project, so it's, it's a, uh, an XML and it contains links between uh, different XMLs. So through identifiers, you can, uh, you can move back and forth and explore the graph. So there's no triple store really. There is a, as, a, as, a, as part of, of Opener, there is an effort which is about linked open data, but that's a projection, it's not the entire graph. So there's a, there was a task uh, in, in Opener uh, 
uh, in the last years that was intended to uh, to transform the the graph the, i mean our information information space and expose it uh, as uh, as uh, lod and uh, but this was was not for the full information it wasn't mapping everything it was mapping just a subset so at the moment uh, what you can find there is not the 100% of the, of the graph, but just a projection. Okay, so uh, why do you have community as part of the graph and not researcher? Very good question. Uh, also because I'm, I'm in, very interested in affiliations and affiliations work with, uh, with researchers primarily. Um, so uh, the problem with researchers is that uh, is a long story. At the beginning, we uh, when we started ten years ago, uh, we were harvesting mainly institutional repositories. We had no, uh, we couldn't get any sense from from author IDs because the author IDs were not there. So we only had uh, name and surname. In the, best, in the best case, mostly like just a string for, for the authors. So uh, modeling authors as an entity standalone wasn't very viable. And um, recently we introduced, and, and it, has, it wasn't viable since recently. Like now that we are uh, feeding back into the construction, um, the Microsoft Academic Graph, which uh, best effort, I would say, because they are not solving all the problems, but they are they do some some work towards uh, towards that. They uh, they have authors as entities. They try to assign uh, IDs to authors, even though it's, not, it's largely perfectible. For example, like I was I was I was looking, it changed that the uh, approach changes uh, with seniority was uh, I have in in in, uh, in Microsoft I have like six different identifiers because I change affiliation in a like handful of time and uh, while I noticed that uh, senior people they are reconciled better so they tend to have uh, one just one identifiers while while uh, fresh freshman uh, or uh, early career researchers have uh, can have more than one so there are identifiers in Microsoft. We could, uh, at some point, um, try to model thanks to that uh, authors, but uh, it's not something that we are doing at the moment. We 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 need to to make it make it make a stance about that and see whether it's going to be possible in the forthcoming future. Uh, Okay, so um, Frank is asking, did I hear correctly? Uh, is going to, is going the graph uh, to integrate base? Yes, uh, is it, it, it will be integrate base. Even though I'm not, uh, I'm I'm not um, taking part active part of this uh, in whole initiative. I know it's going to happen. I don't know in what terms and uh, and what is the deadline for this uh, for this action but it's something that's uh, they ha that um, i've been uh, i've been listening uh, for for last couple of months so yeah it's uh, it's going to, it should happen uh, within the next year within 2020 Okay, so I see the Q and A box remains empty for now. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Andrea, um, thank you. for thank this you very for useful this presentation. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is definitely not the end of the consultation session and mm -hmm. of the work that we're doing on the research graph. So what I would suggest is that you stay tuned, that you follow us um, on social media. You'll hear about any next uh, webinars and consultation sessions. And uh, you'll all receive an email with a link to the recordings uh, once they're available. And uh, so if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact uh, us at uh, webinars at openair.eu or uh, Andrea directly, whose uh, his email address is now on the screen. Um, so thank you very much uh, for attending. And uh, I hope to see you soon in one of the next uh, webinars. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andrea.